it's like 12.30, I should be asleep right now, uh, but I wanted to make a video uh, talking about how every person in the world says they're going to quit Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay? Why the fuck do we care if you're quitting Yu-Gi-Oh? You'll be back. Yu-Gi-Oh's a fucking drug. Like, the amount of times that I've heard this statement from people in our community just simply going, hey, hey guy, hey, hey, guess what? I'm quitting Yu-Gi-Oh. Buy my shit. And then you know what you see? Six months later, you know, for example, most people, if they're going to quit, I usually see them cashing out after nationals. Uh, they'll cash out because of school. Sure, that that's a good reason. But most of the time, these people, they'll be back, right? Yu-Gi-Oh is a drug. And, I mean, like, that that's the topic of this video. Like, there you go. I just gave you the entire video in a minute. But... Let's go a little bit more in-depth uh, than this. So, as I was saying, most people cash out, usually after nationals. Uh, most card prices are crashing at that time. There's usually a ban list rolling out for the fall to winter, quote-unquote, season, uh, whatever it is. If you guys also hear my computer fan going ballistic here, there's another video saving that I can't interrupt because it's been going for like 45 minutes saving. Damn potato. But anyway, people... Or like, I need immediate money, cash out, war cards, getting reprinted, I don't need them. Uh, there's also a lot of people who just buy cards for one big event. Um, there have been people that spend five to $600 buying their deck for nationals, and then they'll cash out after nationals, either getting exactly what they paid for, or at a loss. Now, this is a mentality that I've seen people like Jobber use. Um, obviously, people like him don't want to keep a set card pool around because cards are money. Um, you know, Jobber's talked about countless times before how, you know, like, he's looking for cards for his YCS deck, and then he'll cash out after the event, uh, maintaining his proper card flow and cash flow, which is very, 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 very smart in the ways that you do it. And that's something I've been catching on playing this game, is you don't necessarily want to sit on a large amount of cards. Like, I have a Minerva at the moment. Do I want to keep that Minerva for very long? Probably not, but... For the current point in time, it's nice because I'm probably going to play it at the Indie Regional. Uh, it gives me a chance to play something a little bit different. And if I'm done with the card, I get my invite, I rotate it out. You know, like, it's very, very, very cautious to be sitting on Pot of Desire's Dimension Barriers at the moment. Barriers coming in 60s, Desire's coming in 80s. Are you planning to play consistently? Is it worth it to sit on these cards? Do you have a locals to go to? Or are you just playing in one regional level event. There's no YCS's scheduled. We probably won't get another YCS until February. So why why are you sitting on, you know, desires and things like that? Are you going to locals? You know, you shouldn't be, unless you have a weekday locals, uh, like me, um, my locals is on Thursday. Yes, thank God for weekday locals. They're the best fucking thing ever. Because Saturday is like the worst day ever. Because like, I want to travel. I don't want to sit around. But this year, Christmas and New Year's are both on respective Saturday and Sunday. New Year's Eve, uh, whatnot, is a Saturday. But that's two weeks and you're not going to be playing Yu-Gi-Oh. You probably have another week or so to play. Um, you no, know, if you're holding on to these cards and you're planning to play, kudos to you. But ask yourself, if you're playing competitively, would it be best to rotate these cards now? Get some amount of money for the holiday season or is it worth it to sit on these you know and take the loss i mean you know like i can't justify everyone watch the video but at the end of the day there will be the people that will say you know what going other people will say you know what i'm gonna keep these because these are part of my play set you know a lot of people like high rarity a lot of people don't want to fuck around with shit later you know, most people, like, I've got them, you know, they could go up even more. Every person is right. However, it is within your viewpoint, yada, 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 on how you wish to address the holiday season. Um, but, as back to the topic of this video, if you are quitting this game, you will be back. Asian Sensation uh, made a Facebook post quite some time earlier in the week talking about the guy that had Tyler the Great Warrior. This was a segment I actually wanted to go into more in depth on. Now, if you guys, I don't know the whole backstory. Um, I know uh, the kid was sick. Uh, Upper Deck, I believe, made a card for him. Um, 
you know, I, I'm not gonna, I don't know if it was cancer or something, but I think it was the Grand Wish Foundation or whatnot. Um, should have looked into this a little bit more. Um, but, you know, Kid got a card made for him by Upper Deck. Um, I believe it's only one in the world. Uh, there's been multiple rumors throughout the past. It's one of those touchy subjects. It's just like the Ultra Pro, you know, uh, what is, uh, Upper Deck, not Ultra Pro, what the fuck am I thinking? The Upper Deck Inc or Seal Bori Calcos. It's floating around out there. You know, like, it existed for an event, and then, poof, just... No details on it. I think it was played once. They got a wall of souls. You know, some crazy fucking shit like that. So, you know, the kid doesn't play the game anymore. Um, I, I don't remember which part of the interview he talked about ruined the game for him. But he still talks about the game with his friends. Now, this is something I see a lot from a lot of people. A lot of people don't necessarily play the game, but they keep themselves educated on the game, which is, it's it's kind of cool because at some point you will return to the game, but whether or not it is because you're like, hey, you know, like, this format's really fucking cool, or, you know, like, your friends, just, you got a new card shop in town, and you want to go play with the old gang, so you dust off your deck, you know, it's probably illegal at this fucking stage, because... I don't know when you played, or if you sold everything and, you know, it's tax season, you want to buy a new deck, you're like, I'll try this, but you need to be smart with the way you do these things, you know, like, impulse buying is one of the number one things I see from our community, and you know what, I'm definitely one of those people that has impulse bought, every once in a while, you just want something nice, you want something cool, something to call your own, and you know what, I've seen a lot of that in our community but if you're returning to the game don't impulse buy <sighs> you will waste a lot of money spending just just <laughs> throwing your fucking money everywhere like i don't know why you want to do that um you know like a lot of people don't educate themselves you know, like we made a video you know yesterday discussing the fact that fucking people you know like they're not educated in the sense of like how buying and selling works you know, like most of the time you know are you going to do it yourself then you know what you'll just lose that 12 percent and you can do it yourself but you're taking that time and effort to do so and you know like what rudy over at alpha investments has said you know like you're doing that you're incurring you know the own risk you know someone opens a case on you, you your ass is fucking gone like Good luck. There are some fucking scumbags out there. You know, I've seen plenty of it. You know, like I've even been the victim of some of it. Like asshole will send back an empty fucking envelope. You know, like let's fucking block that shit. Report them. Move along with your fucking day. Like I'm not gonna go into detail on how to scam, because like that's not something that you know the internet needs to know, because uh, it's some fucking low down bullshit. But if you're at the point in your life to where you need to scam someone, whether or not you dislike them or not, you feel like they're getting their just desserts, don't fucking do it. Alright fam, it's a load of fucking bullshit, you're just gonna sit here, you're going to waste their time, you're going to waste your time, you know, what's stopping them from coming to your house, being like, I'm the internet police, tasing you, and or, you know, much worse, you know, like, I've heard some horror stories over time, you know, like, on Facebook, I've seen fucking people in Singapore meet up for trades. Um, you know, like, guys get scammed. I mean, I think some guy got shanked a long time ago. I I don't remember. But, like, there are always these crazy things that can happen. Then again, it's fucking Singapore. So, crazy stories all over the fucking place. But, you're quitting Yu-Gi-Oh. You either have kept a deck because you're like, my, my fucking Chaos Dragon deck from 60 years ago you know, it was cheap, so I'll sit on it. Or, for some fucking reason, you <laughs> you decided to keep your Dragon Ruler deck, knowing that it was the last Nationals that you've played since, what, it was 2013? You're like, you know what, fam? I'm gonna sit here, and I'm gonna keep this. Just put it in a deck box, put this shit fucking far behind me, fucking, and just sit on it. You know what? I'll be able to play Dragon Rulers in three years, because they're not that broken, guys fucking you know what best deck in the format what the fuck can go wrong they're going to fucking 
destroy it. Why did you not sell that shit? Now you lost money. You know, like, the average person in this game doesn't care if they're wasting money. Hell, most of the people in their daily lives don't really care about losing a couple of dollars. Uh, and I'm not making fun of those people, but it's it's really sad because when you try to educate people on things, they, they'll either just blow it off as you're a fucking retard and you know nothing, or they'll actually take time and money or time and effort and, you know, learn. And it's... It's really a shame uh, just seeing certain people just not listen. You know, people like me and John, we make market watches. We try to educate people on what's extremely high. Now, there haven't been any good investments lately. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, like, if I know of something, you know, like, I'm probably going to pick up a couple copies of it and I'm going to talk about it. Or, like, something has risen. Or, like, you know, typically, if you want to know what's going to go up, you know, just think about it look at look to the OCG OCG will usually tell you you know as soon as the Zodiacs came out people bought the shit out of those ulti tankies they were gone now they've been relisted they're much higher than they were and you know what you know who's to blame for that the people that didn't get the information they didn't pay attention to it from the OCG and unfortunately there's nothing that you can do about that except for blame yourself for not being a more educated person and it's it's really sad to say that because uh, most of the resources are there uh, most people just choose to not research them or you know to a lesser extent just don't have the fucking brain to do so like the amount of people that something that can be found on google and just search on google and it's the first result the amount of people that just choose to not use it just way too fucking high like you can go to Wikia, get a half-assed ruling. It's at least there. You know what the fuck's going on. And people just be like, Okay, can you Google that for me, fam? Like, I'll fucking Google you and you're coming back into the game and you're even less educated than you were. So, I don't know. Quitting this game, no one gives a fuck. Alright, like, it's a big fucking funeral. Like, it's like the people that fucking flush the band cards down the fucking toilet when they get banned is a fucking pardoning of them sailing off. Then you get really angry when Chaos Emperor Dragon comes back and it's $40 for no fucking reason. And you know what? You flush your fucking Chaos Emperor down the toilet. No one fucking cares. Like, just say you're gonna take a fucking break and be back. You know, more famous words from a player named Calvin Tahan. <laughs> Man, always his first event. It's nice. Uh, no, no, no personal attacks. Just always, I always enjoyed the sense of humor from Calvin. It's, uh, it's very funny. But you know, no one cares. Just peace out. <laughs> you know, like see, see, see you guys later. Like, no one cares. <laughs> I'm, I can. All right, fuck it. I'm, I'm quitting Yu-Gi-Oh, guys. <laughs> see you tomorrow on another Yu-Gi-Oh video. Yu-Gi-Oh video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please thumbs up this video to show your support. And please check out Vancole 40 for Cardfight Vanguard, M. Cole Games for miscellaneous trading card games, and No Limit Gaming for a brand new series of Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. Thanks for watching.